over to you, Aaron, for your case study. Amazing. Thanks, Henry. All righty. So the problem statement that I was looking into, and this came at a time um, that was uh, relevant for my career, um, which is that, you know, many professional job seekers are frustrated. It's just really hard to jump through all the hoops and figure out everything you need to figure out to actually just get into a new role. And um, it was leaving people feeling overwhelmed with low confidence. And also that this is exacerbated in certain scenarios. And you'll see me grapple with this niche throughout this presentation um, and it evolves. Um, but where I got to was, you know, people that are facing a more significant transition, like returning to the workforce after leave or leaving a long-term employer. So that was the initial problem statement, which actually it has evolved. You'll see that as we go. And so the first objective is um, to achieve problem market fit. So what that is about is identifying that group of people and ensuring that actually there is a group of people that has this pain point. And the way we do that is actually through um, speaking to people, potential customers, and really understanding what it is about them um, and, and what that, that is like for them. Um, so I wanted to validate they were feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, low confidence. Um, and so reached out, I actually did 12 customer interviews. Um, and through that, uh, I identified that five of these participants weren't really inside my target. So they responded to the outreach, but through the conversation, I identified that they were not quite um, in the target. They had different kind of needs like, um, you know, disabilities or other reasons that were impacting their ability versus, you know, the, the niche. Um, and the outreach campaign was just through my personal network. Um, I used the Prod MBA Slack channel as well, which was great. At this point, I didn't use LinkedIn, but given the problem and given the niche, I was pretty confident in the next phase I'd be using LinkedIn for my outreach. Um, but I, I got plenty of interviews very quickly, which also indicated to me that it was that there was a pain point here. People were really keen to talk. So did those interviews, actually, I think I did 13 because one of them bizarrely didn't, uh, didn't take the notes down, but, um, you know, spoke to a lot of people and uh, found actually that they had a lot of in common in terms of some of the struggles. So, you know, when I uh, synthesized this and aggregated, it was kind of some really big ones. My applications aren't getting through screening. I can't get past interviews. And there was a little bit of like, I don't even know what it is that I want to do. Um, so that was kind of pretty common across everybody. And confidence or low confidence was um, pervasive as well. So that was the outcome of that. And that, from there, I came up with my first offer. So this is the, the minimum viable offer. And you'll see this iterate um, throughout as well. Um, and so, again, struggling to articulate that niche. You know, I was busy professionals, busy, ambitious, experienced knowledge workers, trying to figure out what is it that all of these people have in common? Because I can see it, but can't quite articulate it yet. Um, and so landed on, we help busy professionals lead an exciting and fulfilling career um, by showing hiring managers that you're the one every step of the way. Now you'll see this change really significantly, but I left this in there because that's where I was at this point. And it was enough to be able to take the next step and start validating even, even further. It was pretty clear that there is pain in this niche and, it, and that there's something that can be addressed. Um, and, you know, let's see if that resonated. So the second one then is to validate that my offer is, you know, accessible to the people that I was targeting through those interviews and in that niche. And so at this point, I was still considering how I would frame this because I had this idea in my mind of the kind of service or, you know, tool that I wanted to offer, but how to articulate it in a way that was both succinct compelling and, um, you know, accessible. So I, I decided to do a bit of an A-B test here, which was more for, you know, an experiment itself. I didn't expect to get the amount of um, data that you really need to properly run an A-B test. But, you know, I was having fun with these two different MVOs. And um, so I, I created the two separate ones. One of them I targeted frustrated. Um, and then it actually changed to experience, which was really interesting because, when I was, I then was doing outreach on LinkedIn and people were responding very strongly when I said, hey, you've been at that place for a long time. Are you frustrated and looking for a new opportunity? And lots of people, lots of people said very loudly, yes. And some people were like offended, just, you know, why, why are you contacting me? I'm very happy where I work, leave me alone. 
And so I, I, I kind of got a bit off put about that, which is why I changed it to experience. But I think moving forward, I'm going to go back to that kind of like really pointy, specific um, characteristic uh, because you get a really that emotional response and um, it just helps to validate that you're onto something. Um, so that's what I would do. So I got 10% um, outreach to sign up conversion from cold outreach on LinkedIn, um, which was pretty, that, that's pretty good. Um, uh, so I was happy with that. And then the Blue Ocean Strategy Canvas identified a clear opportunity for differentiation in a crowded market, which we'll see next. We'll go through the product um, story canvas and, and vision as well. So you can just see here those two MVOs that I was referring to and how I did that on um, a web page that I diverted the LinkedIn traffic to that then then had to sign up um, to be part of the beta offer. Um, and the Blue Ocean strategy canvas here was quite interesting. So I looked at, you know, in this space, what are all the different um, products that are already playing there? And it's very crowded. So I think uh, I've got their, you know, professional services and coaching, lots of them different forms as well. Um, and then there's the, your generic sort of online resume tools. There's more than 50 of those, more than 50 in the market, if you Google it. Um, and then there's the enhanced online services, which do the same thing, but, you know, add a little bit more. Maybe they've got AI, maybe they've got copywriters, they've kind of got something else and LinkedIn as well. And so when I did the Blue Ocean Canvas and something that I was also been looking at through my own research was around the power of storytelling and you know having that um, really compelling story about yourself and using that and leveraging that in interviews to create a connection and that's something I've been looking at I, I couldn't find that resonating in any of the other products in market and I truly believed and through my own process that I've, I've found that valuable um, and there's lots and lots of articles and research and like it's being published in the Harvard Business Review and there's this this really strong message out there but there's no products leveraging it so that's where I think um, is that that blue ocean um, for this product so we went into the product story canvas I won't go into this in too much detail it has changed and uh, a little bit as well but I also had this started to form this persona a little bit um, and so what it is that this person is feeling what's their current situation what's their desired situation it's all about feeling valued feeling confident but also like there's part of it that's like literally like I just I just want to get the job right and I want to do that effectively and easily so it's kind of um a, it, there's a there's a function or a task that needs to be fulfilled but there's also this kind of deeper emotional need to be valued and to feel confident um and to feel successful and so that's definitely part of this as well and so I landed on the, the product vision. You can see at this point, I'm at MVO number four. That's a picture of the, the, the re reinvigorated landing page that happened through this process. And, uh, you know, landed on the most inspiring and supportive tool for job seekers to build your confidence and increase your success with a compelling personal brand. And I... I landed on the word inspiring actually just today because there was something missing in the vision that spoke to that real like confidence and also just, you know, really enjoying using the product and having a really good experience and actually feeling compelled to share it with your friends. And so I think that there's got to be something inspirational about the product itself. Um, and I think there, I think there could be, you know, as we continue to iterate. Um, so that's the vision. And uh, yeah, so we wanted to sort that out, test that as well. So now we wanted to test that actually this inspiring supportive tool for job seekers is valuable for our target customer, um, but also that it's feasible, right? So what that means is, you know, if we were to kind of propose or design something that we actually can't get to market because it's too expensive or it's going to take too long or there's no way we can monetize it, then that's a real problem as well. So then the next objective here is to work out how you can we get on the same page here with our customers? Can we build them something that they want and can use and, you know, and, and value? So um, that's what this exercise was about. So um, you'll see in the following pages, build out the landing page um, quite a bit, got some feedback throughout that process um, and was really happy with how that is evolving. There's still some, some room to move there. And um, I did another cold outreach. We got 20% of the visitors signed up to join the waiting list which um, is pretty indicative to me that, hey, we're, I'm onto something here. We've got a good path. There's, there's some demand. We're, I'm getting to the right people and they're really interested in the, in the offer. Um, 
And yeah, so then from there, went through the Lean Canvas, um, which starts to describe more the strategy for the product and, and the roadmap to continue to evaluate this and the customer journey map too. So um, the early strategic roadmap here, the Lean Canvas, um, and then the new landing page, which I think I've got a bit, there you go. Um, the lead, uh, the landing page over here. Um, and I got, I did get some interesting results with the landing page actually when I was getting feedback. Like some people thought that, you know, fast track to your dream job, that they thought it was a sort of um, career site where you would be connected with um, jobs that meet your needs. And so I think there's still something there, um, but most people were pretty comfortable. And this section here, I start talking like very deeply around compelling, unique personal brand, authentic story, the power of storytelling, creating connection and um, really start to make clear what the value proposition is. Um, so, and that is just below the fold, um, but most people through testing were actually getting to at least that point. So I think that it's, it's resonating there. And the second kind of byline here talks a lot about storytelling as well. Customer journey map has changed quite significantly through the prototyping. Um, you can see here that originally I was talking about employment history and creating a CV and applying for a job, um, but let's move on because that changes quite a bit. I iterated a lot, even through the wireframes because I, I knew that like the solution was still really, really open in terms of like what I could do with this thing. And I hadn't got enough customer feedback yet through you know, those interviews and through the surveys to actually give me any sort of concrete direction. Um, and so this changed quite a bit. I was getting lots of feedback along the way from you, Henry, um, from Flavia, and I tested it with, I actually tested these wireframes as if it was a usability test, you know, but I was doing the driving with three people um, and got some really good feedback there. And in the end, completely pivoted the product at this point. So that um, was when we were talking about it, we're like, how do we get more quickly to the unique, you know, selling proposition, which is really that storytelling and that hero's journey story has to come right up front. So the entire kind of journey, the customer journey and all of that just flipped on its head um, and I talked about like, should I go back and update that? And I was, we just decided, let's just keep moving um, and see what I could do through this iteration. So then what we wanted to do is validate that the core value of the product is building the confidence of job seekers with the power of compelling storytelling and also that the customers value this highly. And so to do that, what we want to do is actually start to get more concrete on the ideas or the design of the product and start actually getting feedback on that and testing that out with the users and making sure that that's working for them. Um, so what I've done here is built a functional prototype using Figma and Protopy, and then constantly through this process, iterating based on feedback throughout. So I never got to a point where I kind of built something and went hands down, off you go. Like I think almost daily, I'm kind of getting the feedback going, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah, I've been thinking that too. And as I've had capacity, just prioritizing what's the most important to address. I onboarded eight beta testers. I had to be a little bit stealth or not stealth, I don't know, ninja. I was a bit of a ninja about this one. I could only get two interviews in with my time, with their time, with where I was at. So I did those and I got some great feedback. And then I, I did self-managed beta testing. So what I did was outreach to my people that had signed up and I said, hey, you can access the product yourself. Here it is. Can you access the product and then do this survey? And actually five people did. So that was really cool. Um, and then I was able to use that to do the product market fit. This is just an example of like how I iterated the design. You know, that's the early design. You can see here, like this feedback was like, I don't get it. So it moved to this. I had really early confusion. Like, why are we talking about the hero's journey? I've forgotten. So I put this little video in going like, hey, everybody. It's kind of like a sales video, but I put it in the product, two minutes. And then when I asked them, what was the main benefit? I, I think like I'm getting early results. They, they're talking about storytelling. They're talking about it's compelling. People are saying it's really helpful. They're talking about interviews and CV and career. And so I think that there's enough early indicators that the benefit that I was hoping to test was there. The users are seeing that as well, which is good. And then when I tested, you know, how would you feel if you could no longer use the product um, to test the product market fit? I, is, it, is it desirable enough that they would continue to use? We're looking for about a 1%. In this early survey, it was a 
someone disappointed, which is actually a really good indicator um, that we've got early signals that we're going to achieve product market fit here. I'm still holding this lightly though, because, you know, people are just really nice. People are really nice in surveys. And uh, like, I know for a fact that like the product as it is, and I presented it as if it was a real product, right? So they don't think it's a prototype. They think it's a product. Um, and it, it's this, there's no, there's no way it's there yet, but it's a good indicator to keep on going. Um, so segmenting then that target so based on the responders and you know who are the people that um, are actually going to be my high experience customers the people that are actually going to be my early adopters get the most out of it and are going to actually contribute to the roadmap so um you know we're talking about uncertain or low confident job seekers at this major milestone and found out actually through this testing that's where this career break returner came from people that had been on maternity leave or people that had taken time off or had illness and this problem was resonating for these people quite significantly as well. So it actually added kind of a potential niche. And then I had this experienced unsuccessful. So those are people who have a lot of experience, but they're applying for a lot of jobs are just not getting any traction. And then the insecure experience, which is the people that are really experienced, but they're too insecure to even apply for a job. So these are things that are happening as well. Um, and my intention is just to continue to narrow this through the ongoing PMF or product market fit assessment. So as I continue to talk to customers, continue to get the feedback on the product, there'll come a time where that pie chart around, you know, um, I'll just go back so I can, you know, not disappointed, somewhat disappointed, you know, very disappointed. There'll come a time where I can start to see some people in the very disappointed space and start to narrow there on the niche. So I've got some good results around, you know, things to keep doing. People love the brand, the concepts, like everybody was like the concept, the concept, which I'm personally feeling really excited about because I knew that executing on this in the time frame would be extremely challenging. And there's a lot of ambiguity. It's a really large addressable market. Like, you know, that was going to be a challenge, but everybody was like blown away by the concept, which I think is really exciting. And now it's just about the execution. Um, and then the things to improve were like pretty, like, you know, somebody wanted mobile, someone said you could do this with an ebook. Some people were like, this is really distracting. So just really some simple UI changes, um, more guidance, too many pop-ups. So I resolved, I've res actually resolved a lot of these through testing already. And a few, I, I loved, we're talking about like AI, like, oh, is it now going to actually tell me my story for me? Cause I've put in the data and I was like, oh mate, that's interesting. Um, and so, you know, plotting these out in a, in a matrix like this, um, there's some things here that are like relatively low effort and would have high impact based on the feedback. Um, and then this one I've highlighted in red because the reality is the product as it is now, it doesn't have any sort of database, which means that, that you can't use it and then come back and use it again. And people probably don't understand that yet, but as soon as they do, I know that that's just going to be the absolute deal breaker. And that's going to be something we need to invest in early, i.e. at building an actual product with a database. Um, so that's important. Um, and better guidance I'm putting is like really low effort because actually I already had these screens there. I just pulled them out of the prototype because of time, but they're like 70% done and chucking them back in is kind of a no brainer. Um, so I'd really love to experiment and test that with um, the next cohort. So a lot of what I talked to already is addressed here in the short-term roadmap, you know, just some simple things that I, you know, I've just missed the mark on UI, UX, or, you know, things that I didn't include, but, you know, I need to. Um, and I love this. I want to run an experiment with this. I want a professional to write the story for me after I enter my point. So before, obviously, AI would be a while off, but I'm like, I wonder if people would use this. And I give them a 24 hours and I'm in the background, right? So, you know, unless I, I could do 10 a day. Uh, so they, they submit them, I send them back um, and just see if they would actually use this. And also, you know, if we could, um, yeah, yeah. So I, I'd love to do an experiment on that. In the longer term, the save and retrieve database has got to be upfront. Um, and I'm thinking a little ebook as well, because there's a longer journey here to get to where we want to in terms of the vision. But I think that there's a lot of education that could be valuable for our customers. And it's really low effort. Um, so I'd like to do that to build a customer base. And then we get to the repository of career stories, which is taking, you know, the first iteration is really this hero's journey. Um, but actually what I want to do is get in, um, you know, 
lots of different stories that people can use in their interviews and, you know, in addressing their needs across their CV and LinkedIn, et cetera. And then eventually to, I, I really think this AI copy could be something. Um, it's long enough down the track for me to be confident to slap it on the roadmap um, because we're just constantly going to be pivoting and, you know, sensing as we go. So I think it's kind of a bit of a, um, you know, high level vision of what we might get to. Some principles, but I'm kind of reframed this as key learnings because I, this is not all of the product principles that I've applied or learned, but some things that just were front of mind. You want to be very specific on your niche, but I found that I couldn't. So if the addressable market was large and diverse, like don't, don't get stuck trying to like pin down that niche. Sense constantly, redefine, narrow as you go. Um, and I'm pretty confident that I'm, I'm much closer to my niche today than I was, you know, six weeks ago, and it's only going to get better. Get the data, you know, absolutely, you've got to get the data. You'll have an interview with a customer, they'll tell you one thing, and then five other customers tell you the opposite, and you've got to be able to make these really logical data-driven decisions. But be practical, and so for me, I mean, you know, be willing to take a risk to clarify uncertainty. It's like an old sales saying that a no is as good as a yes. Same thing in user testing, right? If you don't know it's A, B or C, test one of them and ruling it out is just as good as ruling it in. Iterate constantly. Like I've iterated throughout this, this whole journey, my MBO, the customer journey, every version of the prototype from wireframes through to Figma, through to Protopy um, and just keep moving, just keep moving and sensing and getting the data and, you know, looking for that ideal customer. And then, you know, this is a classic, right? Design like you're right, test like you're wrong. Um, exactly that. So, you know, I had this idea early, but I just held it at bay because I'm like, I need to just assume that I'm wrong and just keep digging, digging, digging and listening to the customer. Now, in the end, it has come back in a different way. You know, it's it's different to how I originally imagined it, but it, it, it's close enough that I'm like, I'm still just being very, very careful around this confirmation bias that this storytelling and engaging and hero's journey is actually something people are going to buy into because it's, I'm definitely, you know, it's still something I feel very passionate about and I want to speak to more customers before I invest much more. And all of this before you write a line of code. Um, I'm just conscious of time, Henry. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, the, I think I, I mean, I've got time, so we can have a to have a look at the prototype itself. Cool. Um, yeah, because I know you're comfortable with the process, so you don't have to talk me through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So, what am I going to share now? This one. All right. So I'll disappear for a moment. You should be able to see just the one screen. Yep. Cool. So this is it. So I sent this link out. This is in a tool called Protopy. And then fake to login screen, the name's important, as you'll see. Um, people are a bit confused here, so I put this video. Hi, welcome to Pursuit. I embedded a Loom so video here. We have um, and then I can do more. And you can, I, I can't, I didn't put the skip in yet, the, you know, scrolling or a transcript. Oh, yeah. but I um, and I go in and show each stage of the journey as I tell my own story, mm -hmm. like you did in the workshop that you ran. You kind of gave us all the example of your own story. So I, I do that yeah. here. Um, but I'll just skip it for now. Um, this is just a kind of holding page and it's like, let's get started. We do that. Um, so I just wanted to write down, you know, one to three dot points. Uh, I'm just going to say like school. I mean, those are my examples there. So love Lego, played with dolls, you know, whatever. Um, and then you go through and like the copy here is going to be really, really important. And it's something that I want to test. I'm thinking of testing it more like just in a type form or something and just, you know, can I get people to give really, really good, you mm -hmm. know, can I get them thinking the right way? And the copy is going to be so critical um, and I just need more, more data on that before I can actually feel confident that, you know, it's going to work. A few people were familiar with this concept and so they just, they got it. It made a lot of sense to them. Um, this bit was originally one, but I split it into two. So I'm like, when was your darkest moment? I'm like, feature factory, you know, banking. Mm -hmm. um, and then what did you learn from that? I, you know, I discovered the craft of product management and I had, you know, a great mentor and coach, you know. Anyway, so I'll just go kind of quickly through the rest.
And then what it does is it presents that back to you in the form of this um, rudimentary, I need an illustrator journey map, <laughs> um, you know, so it kind of is like in the beginning and then, you know, you know you're familiar with the story and it kind of takes you through the flow. Um, you can edit it here if you want to. So you can edit, oh yeah, so the interactions are weird, but you can, you know, edit things if you want to change them and then you're like, cool, good enough. Um, and then the concept is that you could record a video or audio or write for the for, for today I've just done the writing great and so you know the opening line you can do it later you can close that um, and then I'm telling them like flesh out your dot points and actually turn these into sentences so because mm -hmm. this is a written exercise this is like something you would publish so you can go through now and you can see like all of this updated. So you can actually go here and actually go, you know, I went to school and I learned that X, Y, Z, you know, and then you can scroll through here. And I kind of put these little indicators here. Again, the copy needs work. But the idea is that people then start to learn how they can connect the um, dot points that they yeah. made. And then that's it. So you can save and exit, um, which is cute. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, explore more stories is like, I don't know why that's not working. Uh, there's a bug. Uh, get feedback. Yeah, cool. So I wanted to see mm. like how people wanted to get yeah. feedback. Community came up early that I think people like. Sharing yeah. with friends, people did not like. Most people were like, I wouldn't do that. Um, oh, yeah. But they would Interesting. Say um so yeah so i thought that was really interesting um i do think the friend thing has legs i think if you could get people that are in it together so if it was people on a course or people yeah. that were going together that's when you'll you'll leverage that mm -hmm. um and then this help so i was like do you need help pick your tone someone's going to write your story for you um so i was just kind of testing that out and then the save and exit is like you better take a screenshot because there's no database. <laughs> so you know, take that screenshot and you don't lose the last 10 minutes of your life. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I got to with the Good. prototype. Really, it's awesome to see it. a good tool as well, Protopy. It is. Um, it's yeah, and I think also it's allowed, you know, as you said, it's allowed you actually to validate all of the core assumptions, I think, which is great to see. Um. Good. Okay. So I'm just going to go, if you go back to your presentation, I'm just going to go through some of the slides quickly and then we'll just discuss some, some key points. Sure. Good. So yeah, if you just sort of click through, as I mentioned, each slide, if you go back to the first one on the problem. It's not loading on my screen. Is it on your screen yet? No, it did take a few seconds last time. Well, don't, don't worry, I'll, I'll talk through them. Oh, yeah, there we, go. there we go. Good, right. yeah, so on the problem slide, um, I thought this was good, you know, very clear. I think the second slide was great. You bridged into it very well. So if we go to the next slide, the first batch of object, you know, you talked about, okay, well, what is problem market fit? What are we actually trying to do? How do we actually validate it? And then you went into the key result. It's so important that there's a clear narrative, like, what, you know, why are you showing me this stuff? What is the objective? And then how did that translate into key results? And what did you actually do? What did you learn, et cetera? So you had that, that, that uh, clarity of the narrative with all of your points, which I thought was very strong. Um, on the interviews, um, just on the next slide. So that was great. You know, you gave a few examples of, of who wasn't in your niche and who was in your niche. Um, and you get a nice storytelling around like the specific learnings. You got things like, you know, I got lots of responses. This was in a good indication that the problem was acute. So you're constantly showing that there's learning and also implicitly that there's value in product discovery. Right? You know, you're showing to the stakeholders listening. It's like, hey, this is why I did all of that work, you know, doing these interviews, et cetera. Um, yes, yeah, so a good summary as well of, of this page on one. The only thing I would criticize the whole presentation, you dropped in and you see said, OK, so this was the MVO, the minimal viable offer. What actually is that, though? You know what? People aren't going to understand. What are we trying to do with that? So just adding that simple sentence, okay, you know, we crafted, we sort of package this into what we call a minimal viable offer, really just a way to see if we write a single sentence sort of promise or we offer something in text to our niche, do we get some feedback that they're actually interested in that? So just mm -hmm. adding that one line would have framed, I don't think people would have got the next few slides because they would have been like, well, what the hell is this MVO thing? 
Mm -hmm. So really important to just go down to first principles, like what actually is the thing, not just what is it called? Mm -hmm. It's the only criticism I've had. On the second lot of objectives, again, you did a really good job of just talking through the learnings you had around this frustrated verse of his experience. And it was, I think it's a great learning for you just to see how one, you know, one single word or one tiny subtle insight can completely determine the success or failure of a product or whatever the stage is. Um, so I thought it was great for you to see like, you know, wow, actually it just, just you know, one single word can create such different reactions. And you can imagine then, you know, you take that same logic to a product strategy. And again, what's that one key word or one key insight that, that will make or break the product? So I think, you know, seeing these small things is really important. Um, I thought, you know, great conversion, 10% is very good if you're doing cold outreach. So again, lots of indication that there's something here. Um, on the Blue Ocean, again, you did a very good job here. You talked about what it is. Uh, why are you talking about it, specific learnings, and some nice little storytelling habits you have was, you know, you, you mentioned, for example, like there are 50 tools out there that do X, Y, Z. So it really brings it to life. So rather than just saying the market is busy, you know, I'm thinking, well, like, what do you mean busy? Like how many products are there? What are they all doing? You know, giving a really nice stat for somebody to remember, or, a, you know, can you give a story, a specific example? It really helps reinforce the point you're trying to make. So I thought that was very good. However, you didn't actually go through the sort of the, you know, with, with the Blue Ocean, it's a great example to help people visualize. It's like, look, over here, you know, everybody, we've got 50 tools and all of them are doing 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Actually, if we play in this space, nobody's doing anything there. So see, you're sort of trying to build excitement and get people excited about the opportunity you're pitching to them. So I thought you missed a slight opportunity there. Um, on the vision and final landing page, it's good, but do not underestimate how the need to be concrete. For example, the, you know, uh, sorry, the next, no, back next one, one, just with the, one. this one, yeah, just for you showing that screenshot at the bottom, sorry, on the vision. Um, you know, that like being seen, heard and valued, it sounds nice, but it's, it's super vague. So you want to be unbelievably concrete, you know, what, okay, so if you're fast tracking me to my dream job, like how long is that going to take? What am I putting into this? What kind of role? So be really concrete and you'll see a big difference uh, in your conversion. Um, on objective three, again, good intro, you know, what is it? How do we, how do we do the thing? Why is this important? That was very clear. I loved your talk through of the landing page and some of the learnings there as well around, um, you know, a uh, lot of info below the fold, but we saw in the data that people were actually going down to read it. These kind of, get, again, these little examples just make everything much more memorable. Um, I thought the wireframes, you did a very good explanation. Objective four was very good, uh, very well-written objective statement there. I think there was a clear, a clarity. You clearly had clarity over what was really important. Right, this sort of the, the compelling storytelling element, which was great to see. And then on the learnings, um, I thought it's just really interesting actually to hear this. I think, you know, great that you, good thinking and saying, look, I can't, you know, I can't get people on a call, but what's the next best thing? Get them to actually go and test it themselves. So I thought that was great to see. Um, and the, sorry, on the word cloud, awesome. Yeah. Like there's a load of feedback there. Um, which is great. I think, as you said, it's like, you know, the core things there, it's just do the same thing, but better. Yes, there are some things to improve, but actually none of them seem fundamental to the, the core experience. Um, so I liked, you know, I like the confidence you had talking through that. Um, and on the product market fit score, so if we go to, yeah, don't worry, they're all blurred. There we go. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good score. And I think it's not surprising that, it's you're not getting people that love the product because actually what do they need really the core value is that they get positive feedback from an interview and so you know there's a delay between they write something and then they get that feedback so until you get to that point you're not going to get people loving it they're just going to go well that was sort of interesting perhaps cathartic getting a story down but it's not wow that's helped me get my job
Yeah. So I think, you know, but keep, keep your eye on that. Yes, it's about storytelling. But what does the storytelling serve? Yeah. Most importantly, it serves getting them a job quickly, easily, low effort, etc. cetera. I mm -hmm. uh, love the segmentation analysis again. And I think it's great learning with the niche and you're completely right. You know, some, there are times when it's, you know, we're not going to have that clarity, but as long as we have a system in place to find clarity, which we have with the product market fit engine, then it's okay. As long as you see that there's an, you know, you need to say, yes, there's an acute problem first, if it is, even if it's a bit messy, let's, let's, let's pursue it. It's worth our time to pursue it and maybe work out who that niche might be. So I thought that was excellent. Um, and then, you know, zooming out, I think over the eight weeks, <laughs> usually I've got like three things to improve. I think honestly, in your case, there's just no major comments. I think, you know, specific things you've done very well the you know you, the leadership stuff i see with the storytelling with the supporting other people you know i've got feedback from people you've done calls with has been excellent it seems to me that you do that anyway in your day-to-day -day work which is great you've got to got that that i mean you've got the fundamentals of a good of being a really strong leader second thing i really liked was the it's a subtle thing that's not really talked about but it, it's sort of strength of vision so what I mean by that is it's been very clear to me that there was a, you know, yes, you iterate a lot, but there was a clarity around the problem, around what the vision was, around what the strategy was, you know, where you're playing in that market, how that translated to a solution, and then how that has, uh, um, how you've also understood the learnings and, and potential next steps with this. I think that's so important because, you know, as you know, you're always going to have people pushing you left, right, and, and whichever way. So just being very firm and saying, no, this is what we need to be doing. And, and having that repetition now with Prodembi, I think is, is going to set you in very good stead. Um, and finally, thing, just proactive. You know, I think it's so important. You're somebody that's put, putting your hand up. You know, you went and did 12 interviews rather than five. If you always go above and beyond, like you're always just going to do well. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and pushing yourself, for example, in the UX, not settling because you're aware this has to be a really good experience at a minimum. Um, so I thought that was great as well. So yeah, you know, I think there's no specific thing to improve upon. I think really now it's just getting in the right environment. And I think, you know, this new job sounds like a really good opportunity. Um, uh, one thing actually, I think is that, you know, getting in the right environment, but also learning to manage yourself effectively. So I would say, go and read my, my book on this. Um, you know about these self-management tactics because you know the more senior you get or even even if you find yourself in a job that you love you can't throw yourself too much into it and then that's ultimately going to be detrimental to you you know your family and also your work at some point so i think that's one thing to really keep your eye on is like you know you've got the tools for product leadership but you need to sort of spend some time on you as erin right and how how you sort of look after yourself as well I mean, I think everyone in my life would say that, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if everyone's saying it, then there's probably something to, to work on there. <laughs> yeah, again, it's, it's, a, it's a, I have, you know, it's a, if you're a type A person, then you're always pushing yourself. So it, it's a challenge to sort of hold, pull yourself back a little bit at times. Yeah. But, um, you know, as you found with burnout, I found that with burnout in the past, you have to learn how to do these things, ultimately. That's Good. Right. Any sort of final comments or thoughts on, you know, in terms of your next steps, any, any sort of things you want to really focus on in the next um, moving into the new role, for example? I think, um, you know, it's been a big year. I'm like really, and this is me, this is me at like 11 o'clock on Friday, the 17th of December, officially like clocking off for the year you know and taking a break and mm -hmm. so I'm kind of like I'm going to be doing that processing over the next few weeks um, yeah. I'm really excited to start in my new job I think that you know it's going to be an awesome experience and I'm going to get to take all of these skills and skills obviously like that I've learned through my mm -hmm. career and apply it to a new problem which to, is just the most exciting thing in the world for me mm -hmm. um, but yeah I think that, that management of my you know, like regulating how much I'm putting into things is going to be critical for me, um, you know, for the rest of my life, but most specifically, you know, in January. So I'm mm -hmm. hoping that, you know, that that's probably my biggest focus. 
I also think that like I'm probably going to continue tinkering with this because I was sharing this with a friend who's a coach actually and I was like you know I could build this even if it was never for any reason other than people who I was mentoring and supporting and I'd be like hey you should try this thing out let me know what you think and they might get some value out of it and you never know and I'm like you know I get to practice the skills and build something yeah 100% that I, yeah no no, no keep, keep working on it keep working on it as you said you don't need to you know you don't need to worry about a business outcome with it it's just is this something that's actually providing value and see where it goes really yeah good well look, I, I'd suggest then to you know as you said yeah take some time to decompress what I'd like actually is the next step message me in the first week I mean I'd be curious about how the new job's going but do message me just with you know what I'd like to see is say like three specific things you're going to focus on in your self-management so that you have a foundation as you move into the new role because it's very easy to get swept up in the new job and then forget you detach yourself from those foundations quite easily so I think that's something I'd like to you know just literally send me a bullet point list right here's three things I'm going to be focusing on Mm -hmm. and I think if you get that right then you know you're going to be your career will just keep keep going onwards and upwards as well awesome well, uh, thanks, Aaron, for the honestly really good case study. Uh, interesting, really interesting as well to see the learnings actually, because I haven't seen, you know, I haven't really seen the last few weeks, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. So it's really interesting to see. And um, yeah, have a good Christmas. Take, make sure you relax, time off, recover. Thank and you. And we'll catch up in, in jam. All your support. Um, yeah, it's been great. It's been, it's been great. Yeah, glad to um, hear. I'll send you a note too. Like I just some feedback on the product market fit. I'll give you some my user experience feedback. Like yeah, I found that'd be like great. That'd be great. all of the course up until that point was very like really easily accessible, but it could, mm. I don't know. So any kind of, and then, but when I got no, to that, the last, found, last few weeks we need to improve. I definitely need yeah, to Yeah, like some of the instruction didn't, you know, cause you were like, we're seeking, we're trying to find this out, but we didn't ask them that question. And so I'm like, oh, I could have yeah. just put that in a survey. And then, but anyway, so I'll send you some feedback. Yeah, yeah, do, do. Cause I, we're going to be redoing week five onwards. I think rethinking actually awesome well have a great christmas break and um yeah good luck with the new job as well in january thank you thanks so much bye bye